mail out a mail-in ballot to every resident in the county. This was slapped down by the Texas Supreme Court in a 9-0 decision. So if the president of the United States wants to condemn Texas as undemocratic, then let's see him insist on states like New York and Massachusetts and his own home state of Delaware to enact the kind of things that they were, that they were playing with in one county here without any statutory uh, positive authority to do so. 888-971-SAGE, 888-971-7243. I am Larry Elder. We are ReliefFactor.com studio. We're going to be on the Hannity Show at around um, 6.45 or so Pacific time. More on that later on. My guest has written a piece we have up, up on LarryElder.com called America the Outlier. Photo, voter photo IDs are the rule in Europe and elsewhere is the title of the piece. It's up on LarryElder.com. Please welcome back to the program John Lott, founder and president of the Crime Prevention Research Center. CrimeResearch.org is the website. John, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Uh, great, great to talk to you. John, I read your piece. Uh, and uh, as you know, one of the things that Eric Holder once said, the former AG, uh, is that uh, photo ID, requiring photo ID, is an example of, quote, pernicious racism, end of quote. Right. Well, I mean, there's all sorts of hyperbole that's being thrown around. Just a couple weeks ago, the New York Times was claiming that the Republicans were becoming anti-democratic and authoritarian. And uh, one of their two main F proofs for that was that the types of uh, voter laws requiring IDs that Republicans and state legislatures were trying to push through. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I guess my response is uh, if, if requiring photo IDs is proof of an authoritarian, anti-democratic uh, tendency, then Sweden is anti-democratic. France is anti-democratic. You know, essentially all of Europe is anti-democratic. You point out in your article that of the 47 nations surveyed, uh, only one uh, does not require government-issued photo ID to vote, and that's uh, UK. And even there, uh, they're mandatory in Northern Ireland uh, because of the fraud that they've experienced in the past. No, that's exactly right. They've had to go through multiple times changing the rules, uh, and it's different parties. Uh, in 1985, Margaret Thatcher uh, put in ID requirements, but what was discovered was that some of the IDs that were allowed, like your medical card, uh, were easily forged. And so Tony Blair uh, in 2002 uh, put in new rules that required tamper-proof, government-issued photo IDs to be able to use. So you had both the Conservative Party and the Labor Party there uh, taking a crack at trying to eliminate the fraud that they both believe existed. And it's and some stuff has come out since then, uh, kind of after the statute of limitations had run out. Uh, the head of Sinn Féin there uh, in interviews with academics explained how they had whole fleets of cabs uh, that would ferry people from one polling place to another, how they'd have um, uh, special houses set up uh, where people could go and change disguises, you know, put on wigs or uh, different clothes or whatever, so it would be more difficult uh, for anybody to identify them as having voted in more than one place. And it was a massive operation that they had going there. My guest is John Lott. He's with the Crime Prevention Research uh, Center. Uh, the, uh, the article is called America the Outlier, Voter Photo IDs are the rule in Europe and elsewhere. John, you point out that only the only as we talked about the UK already. Japan, New Zealand, Australia currently do not require photo IDs, uh, but uh, the UK is moving towards that. Japan provides each voters with a ticket that bear unique barcodes, and New Zealand also requires uh, a unique code as well. So even the ones that don't require photo ID require something very similar. That, that's right. Um, and New Zealand technically uh, requires that you also have a photo ID, but it's possible to go and vote without it. It just takes more time. They essentially have to look up your information along with assuming you bring the barcode with you mm -hmm. uh, to go and uh, identify the individual. You also point out that there was a 2002 survey of Northern Ireland by the U.K. Electoral Commission, 
And they found by a 64 percent to 10 percent margin, voters thought, quote, fraud in some areas is enough to change the election results, close quote. Now, I mention that, John, because that is well before Donald Trump emerged on the political scene. So it's awfully hard to blame that on Donald Trump's uh, purveying of the so-called big lie, close quote. Right. No, I mean, this is something that's gone on for decades. Uh, And the rules have changed over time in many different ways in Europe and around the world as they've discovered fraud that's occurring. Um, You know, so we're talking about Ireland, but uh, Northern Ireland, but you also have like absentee ballot rules. Uh, Seventy-four percent of the countries in Europe ban completely ban absentee ballots for people living in the country. Mm -hmm. Another 6% uh, limited to only people in the military or uh, who will be in the hospital on the day of the election. And they just don't take your word for it like they do in the United States. You have to go and get third-party verification. The hospital has to sign a certified form saying that you will be in the hospital that day. And then on top of that, they require that you have to have photo IDs to physically pick up the absentee ballot. Another 15% of the countries, bringing the total to 95%, require that you have to have photo IDs to physically pick up the ballot, uh, the absentee ballot that you're going to have. You know, uh, all those rules, you know, make even the most stringent rules that we have here in the United States look, you know, completely unsafe by comparison. Uh, but, you know, just to see how these things have changed over time, France used to, up until 1975, have uh, absentee ballot rules that were fairly similar to what we have in most of the states here. Um, but they discovered literally hundreds of thousands of dead people that were voting. They also discovered large-scale vote buying that was occurring. The thing with absentee ballots is that you can use them to get paid because the person who's paying you can verify how you voted. John, John, uh, John, John we, only, we only have about 45 seconds left. Talk to me uh, about the Texas law. Uh, that law has been described as discriminatory and racist. Your reaction? I think it's ridiculous. I mean, look, uh, what they're tr- the main things they're trying to do is make sure that somebody is around to watch the ballot box whenever uh, people are voting. Uh, when you have the 24-hour uh, allowing people to vote, you have people that come in at 2, 3 in the morning. Nobody's around. They're essentially saying there are certain reasonable hours that you can have it, and somebody has to be there to watch the, the box while it's being used for ballots to be put in. When it's not being used, it has to be locked and stored securely. We have to leave it there, That's John. That's what upsets people. America the Outlier. Voter photo IDs are the rule in Europe and elsewhere. It's up on LarryOlder.com. John, as always, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you.